The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. When Jesus was here on earth, were there not many in Israel, Old Testament believers, who had already believed in the coming Christ before he arrived? Was being born again before or during Christ's earthly ministry any different than being born again today? Some good questions that we're going to be thinking about today on Grace in Focus. Thank you for joining us. This is the Grace Evangelical Society's radio broadcast and podcast ministry. You can find out more about us at our website, faithalone.org. You will find there our daily blogs and information about our national annual conference coming up 2024, May the 20th through the 23rd. Get information and get registered. We hope to see you. Once again, that's faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. And we have a question from, I think his name is Dave. Dave, well, that's good. I'm, I'm getting this from his email account. so I think The it's greatest Dave. king of Israel. Yes, Dave. David. I wonder if that's what they call David. You yeah. know, his buddy's like, hey, Dave, what's hey, up? Dave. <laughs> they probably didn't. <laughs> Dave is dealing with the issue that we come up with occasionally where people ask, Okay, GES says that, and not just GES, but a lot of dispensationalists would say it this way, that Old Testament folks were saved by believing in the coming Christ. I'm assuming you would word it the same way as I would, basically, that they believed that the coming Christ was coming to establish an eternal kingdom, and he would be the one who would give life to those who would be a part of that kingdom. Well, and they knew that that life came simply by faith. Yes, and I think John five thirty nine and 40 brings this out. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. He's not talking about all of the Jewish people that he talked to, and we're going to mention some exceptions, but he's talking about the Sadducees and the scribes and the Pharisees. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. But these are they which testify of me, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. Well, there were people, even before they heard a word from Jesus— who already came to him for eternal life. That's right. So we have people in the New Testament who meet Jesus who already had eternal life. And I think Dave suggests a few people we might want to consider. Yes. Who does he suggest? He suggests, for example, John the Baptist. Okay, John the Baptist. So before Jesus comes to be baptized by him, was John the Baptist somebody who believed in the coming Christ for eternal life. And I would say absolutely. Yeah, I was. In John 3.36, he's a prophet, the greatest except Jesus. And in John 3.36, he's witnessing concerning Jesus. And in fact, from John 3.22 to 36, he's the example par excellence of someone who's confessing Christ. Right. So, yes, it, it, there's every indication he didn't know that his cousin was the Messiah until he baptized him. Right. But he was already born again long before that, because he had already believed in the coming Messiah. And then Dave gives a couple other examples that I think are pretty easy. He agrees, by the way. He says, yeah, it seems like these are home runs. Right. Simeon and Anna. Okay, Simeon was this old man. Right. Jesus was brought into the temple when he was 40 days old. That was the requirement. When a boy was 40 or a girl was 80, the parents brought them to the temple and they would offer a sacrifice. The sacrifice that Joseph and Mary offered was the sacrifice for poor people. A couple birds. Yeah. And they didn't have the funds in order to offer the better sacrifice, the more expensive sacrifice. But when they're there, Simeon comes up and he rejoices and he says that the Lord had revealed to him that he would not die before he saw the Lord's salvation. Right. He knows this baby in front of him is Messiah Savior. He's the one that he's been waiting for. Right. So he be- obviously believed he was coming. And not only believed he's coming, believe he's the source of everlasting life. Right. And Simeon knew he would be in the kingdom with him. Right. We'd say the same thing for Anna. Anna. Anna is specifically said to be a prophetess. And she's 84 years old. She's devoted herself to being in the temple. And she too knows this is the Messiah. And it's obvious that she's convinced she'll be in the kingdom with him because of her faith in him. There's no hint anywhere that Simeon or Anna thought their works had anything to do with them getting into the kingdom. I remember reading some time ago about Simeon, that there's a church history that says he was 113 years old. 
<laughs> I said, I, you know, I don't think so. I don't think this guy 113 walking around the temple picking up babies and stuff like that. But maybe. Oh, who knows? But uh, anyway, but then Dave goes on to say, what about the blind guy in John 9? The interesting thing, you know, Jesus says to him, do you believe in the Son of God? And he says, who is he, Lord, that I may believe? And he says, I who speak to you am he. And that's when he falls at his feet and worships him. Well, a lot of people say that's when he's born again. I personally think the man was already born again. And the reason I do is when you study John's gospel, every time, every time, every time Jesus evangelizes, he says three things. The person who believes in him has everlasting life. There's believing, there's him, there's everlasting life. In this, he just says, do you believe in the Son of God? Believing him. There's no everlasting life there. It's evident to me that the man already believed. That's why Jesus doesn't mention that. The man's already believed. So he would fall in the category of these guys like John the Baptist, Simeon, Anna, who had already believed in the coming Christ for eternal life. I think so. In fact, remember when he's being questioned? It's amazing because they're saying, admit this man's a sinner who healed you. He's like... I don't know whether you're going to call him a sinner or not, but it's pretty remarkable. Nobody's ever been healed of blindness that we know of ever, and he heals me, and you're calling him a sinner? I love this guy, John died. He's my hero. (laughs) And he's willing to be kicked out of the synagogue. I know. He's confessing Jesus even before he knows Jesus is the Messiah. Right. He's standing up for Jesus. So I think he's a believer. Now, a lot of people wouldn't, but I would say he's another example of an Old Testament believer. And the reason I say that is because Jesus doesn't talk to him about everlasting life. He doesn't life. evangelize him like he evangelizes everybody else exactly. that, he, that he gives the gospel to. It's coming. It'll be here before you know it. What am I talking about? The Grace Evangelical Society's National Conference 2024. It will take place May the 20th through the 23rd at Camp Copus, an absolutely beautiful campground in North Texas, right on the lake with lots of recreation, great food, a great place to stay, wonderful fellowship, and wonderful free grace Bible teaching. Information and online registration now at faithalone.org slash events. Come and join us, faithalone.org slash events. Okay, so Dave talks about these guys. We're all in agreement about these guys. There might be one, a question about the blind guy in John 9. But then he asks a question that I've been asked many times as well before. What about the apostles? You know, in John 1, they go, we found the Christ, the one that Moses wrote about, right? And so this implies they've been looking for him before. And so can we say that maybe the apostles, or at least some of the apostles, could be I suppose someone could say, well, no, they didn't. But when Jesus met with them and talked to them, that's when they said, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you're raising a good point. And that is the nation in the first century had a high messianic expectation. Almost everybody in the nation believed Messiah was coming and was hoping Messiah would come. If you've seen Fiddler on the Roof, oh, Tevye, you know, oh, the Messiah would come. Well, even today, keep a empty chair for Elijah to come next year. There you go. So. The fact that they believe Messiah was coming doesn't mean they were born again. They have to believe in him for everlasting life. It is simply by faith. The way I read John 1, I would say the disciples mentioned there believed in him for everlasting life at that point. At that point. Yeah. In John 2.11, we get the famous expression, it says, his disciples believed in him. Well, according to John 3.16, whoever believes in him has everlasting life. It's possible that's the same group from chapter 1, and that could mean that, okay, uh, this is the first time they believed in for everlasting life. But most people would say, no, they believed in for everlasting life in chapter 1. And this is talking about a different group of disciples or the same group who were continuing to believe in him, and that's all that's saying. But in answer to uh, Dave's question, I would say I'm open. I tend to think that all of the disciples came to faith after hearing and meeting Jesus or having someone tell them about Jesus, right? In John 1, in some cases, they're told about Jesus. Well, they some of them spend the day with him. Yeah. And so maybe that's when Jesus told them, I know you're waiting for the Messiah, but I'm also the one who gives you eternal right. life. And they would have believed, And then they would have told one another. 
you know. But, but if you're saying, is it possible that at least one or two of them were Old Testament believers? As in the case of Simeon or right. Anna or John the Baptist, yeah. I don't think we can rule that out. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we know. I don't I mean, think we have enough scripture to indicate. I mean, we can look through the guys in John 1, and I think there's four there. Right. Then we. what about the other? Okay, we know Judas didn't come to faith. What about Levi? Yeah, we got was seven. Levi, what, was Levi a believer and... He believed in the coming Christ, and then he saw, heard Jesus preaching. Yeah, and we were arguing we, he was already a believer, but not because he was an Old Testament right. saint. We he were heard, saying he'd heard teaching of Jesus. He was say. in Galilee. Yeah. Levi was in Galilee and would have heard Jesus preach, so he could have been another one who either believed then, as he heard Jesus talk about eternal life then, or he could have been an Old Testament believer who believed that he had eternal life in the coming Messiah. But let me say this. I know you're listening and you're probably going, this is kind of speculative, you know, like how do we really know? And some of this may be blowing your mind. Like you may never have thought about Simeon and Anna already being born again, or the man born blind already being born again, or, or the, these other examples. But it's important to think about this, but we're limited by what the scriptures tell us. Right. And so in answer to the question about the apostles, it's not crystal clear whether some of them might have already been Old Testament believers before they heard Jesus. And I I like what you said. In a group of 11 men, there very may well have been both kinds. There may have been one or two who did. Now, Dave also asked, to us, this is pretty clear. What about Paul? Both Bob and I both say that, well, no, Paul was a guy who believed in the coming Messiah, but he believed he had to work for it. Right. And he also believed that Jesus wasn't him. Right. In fact, he killed people who said he was there when Stephen was killed. And not only that, Paul gives his testimony three times in the book of Acts. And in all three times, he's on the road to Damascus and Jesus confronts him and he says, who is it, Lord? And this is Jesus whom you are persecuting. And at that point, he comes to faith. And we also know that because of 1 Timothy 1.16. Do you right. remember that verse? Oh, yeah. That, that I would be the example for one who believed in him for eternal life. Yeah. Paul's there saying that I'm, I'm a paradigm or an example of those who will believe on him for everlasting life. And in the context, he's talking about before he comes to faith, he's his persecutor of the church. And so clearly Paul's saying in 1 Timothy 1.16, he came to faith after he was a persecutor, while he was a persecutor of the church, while he was on the way to Damascus to arrest Christians. Well, thank you for this question, Dave. I hope it stimulates a lot of conversation. I do too. And in the meantime, keep grace grace in in focus. focus. Be our guest and subscribe to our 48-page magazine, Six Issues Per Year, also called Grace in Focus. It's free by emailing your name and snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Maybe you've got a question or comment or feedback. If so, please send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. And when you do, please make sure your question is as succinct and clear as possible. That would be a great big help. On the next episode, does 2 Peter 1.10 say that works are necessary to get into heaven? Please join us for that. And until then, let's keep grace in focus. The preceding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.